let's let's go ahead and jump in here. So Garrett, thank you so much for joining me on the You're Not Alone podcast today. I am super excited to have you on. Um, Jenna has just been a great resource. She's such a good friend. Um, and so I was super excited when she connected us because obviously, and we were kind of joking about this before we started recording the, the episode, that you are the nuts and bolts guy. You're, nuts and bolts. You're nuts and bolts. You're the guy that kind of brings everything together. Um, and for those of you kind of that clicked into this episode, Garrett is the director of intake operations at NoCD. Um, and I'm going to let him kind of explain that a little bit more. But handing it over to you, Garrett, could you just give my audience a quick introduction on yourself? Yeah, for sure. And thanks so much for having me, Zach. I'm delighted to be here and to share some information with your audience and just have a nice, nice chit chat today. Yes. Um, yeah. So as you stated, I'm the director of intake operations here at NoCD. And part of that role is just making sure that everyone's doing what needs to be get get done, right? Uh, making sure that everything's falling into the right place and making sure that when problems arise, we solve those problems. Um, I'm based in Los Angeles. I've been at NoCD for a little under two years here. Um, and it's been such a, a joy and a pleasure to see this company grow and to help so many people who are struggling with OCD. So, yes, absolutely. And that's cool. I didn't know that you were based in SoCal. I'm based yeah. in SoCal. Oh, look at that. Maybe we should, we should hang out at some point. We should, I mean, <laughs> I'm, I'm liking the energy here. I know it's, it's, it's Friday. So we both got Friday vibes going right oh, now, yeah. but I, I'm thinking at some point this might need to be a thing. So that's cool. Um, right. and yeah, I appreciate kind of the background there and, um, just sort of opera, uh, keeping operations running in the right direction as we were joking, yep. doing more of the good things, doing less of the bad things, yep. making it easier for people, uh, individuals that are struggling with OCD to get the resources that they need. So um, f for the listener who's sort of connecting the dots here, they clicked into mm -hmm. this episode because they're either at the point where they're like, okay, I think I have OCD or they're like, I do. And I need to figure out the next step. Yeah. Just real quickly to kind of drive this home. What are the signs and symptoms that somebody can sort of look out for, um, with OCD? Yeah. So if you're struggling with OCD, or think you're struggling with OCD. There's probably a couple of different things going on. Number one is that you're thinking about it, right? There's probably some type of behavior that you're exhibiting, whether that's you know, checking the lock on your door multiple times, you know, having recurring thoughts over and over again, playing them over in your head and having a lot of distress and anxiety caused by that. So you can have, you know, what are called physical compulsions or mental compulsions, right? And there's an array of uh, ways in which those can, can come about, right? Um, and so if you're somebody who's struggling with physical or mental compulsions, and then you're doing something to alleviate that, right? Like, so for example, um, you know, one thing that um, I've heard others share with me before is, you know, if they don't fold their laundry the right way, their mother will die. Yes. Right? Yes. And it's like, okay, you know, as a person, you know, okay, I know that that's not going to happen, but I feel like if I don't do this thing, something bad is going to happen. Right. right. So even just starting there at the most basic level, and then you go on Google or whatever search engine that you use, and you say, Hey, I'm struggling with this thought. Does anyone else struggle with this thought? Or, Hey, I think I've got this going on, yep. you know, whether it's a relationship or a sexual orientation or whatever it is. Uh, that's, that's probably where most people start is, Hey, I've got this thing that's bothering me and I don't know what to do about it. Um, yes. and as far as getting started, you know, that's why we have so many helpful articles and pieces of information on our website relating to the many different subtypes of OCD, depending on what you're exhibiting. So that way you can get plugged in and look at someone else's story and say, Hey, I'm relating to that. Right. Say, Hey, this actually sounds like something that I'm going through. Um, and then hopefully, you know, you go on our website and you say, okay, I'm interested in getting on the phone with somebody who maybe knows a little bit more than me, right? Um, and you'll you'll basically be greeted, greeted by one of our care advisors, right? So when you pick up the phone and schedule a call with us at NoCD, someone will greet you on the other end of the line who's one, familiar with OCD, also hoarding, also body-focused repetitive behaviors, right? A couple other mm. things that we help treat here at NoCD. Um, and they are just going to listen. Right. They're super empathetic individuals with lots of experience, understanding and treating people with these conditions. Mm. And they're just going to help you figure it out. And of course, they're not licensed clinicians. Right. That right. part comes later. Uh, but based on the information that gets shared, oftentimes people are in the right place to get treatment for the OCD that they're experiencing, whether they understand that that's their diagnosis or not. 
Yes. Yes. Okay. That's awesome. And I think that that's really helpful too in the clarif- the clarification around, hey, th- these aren't the licensed clinicians just yet, but they right. have a deep understanding, maybe a lived experience themselves, yes. super empathetic. They want, they're an open book. There's nothing that you can tell them that they probably haven't heard a thousand times because that's also for, for those of you kind of connecting the dots on, on OCD, what you'll find, and I don't mean this in, in an offensive way at all. But just understand that our thoughts are not unique to us. We are not right. the exception to the rule. That's something that you'll learn through that process. Um, and Garrett, I'll tell you exactly how you described the, okay, here are the thoughts that are causing you distress. And then going on Google and Googling, yeah. why is this thought causing me? Why can <laughs> I not get this thought out of my head? Why is this so distressing to me? Yeah, sticky thoughts, sticky thoughts. Sticky thoughts. And it doesn't matter how many times somebody reassures you it, it it's like it just it can't stick it can't nope. stick it always goes back to that doubt and i'll tell you that was the exact process for me exact mm-hmm. same process for me um i was having sexually intrusive thoughts and my yep. very first google search was why am i why am i scared to be gay yep because i had never cared I, I like for me your sexual orientation is your business and I, i'm completely I mean, I think at this point in society, we should be to a point where it's yeah. whoever you want to love is whoever and, you should love. And, and tangentially, happy Pride Month, right? Exa- Which there you we're, go. We're celebrating here at, at No CD, so I hope all you guys are celebrating that too. And yeah, I totally agree with you. It's like, um, you know, not to toot our own horns here, but yeah, hey, that's your business, right? But if it's something that's bothering you and causing you distress and you're taking to the internet to search for answers, right, it's a different level. There's something. There's something else happening there. It, it definitely because it was the 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 conflict for me was i've never had an issue with who people wanted to love and but for me i had always identified as a straight male so i was like i'm confused as to why this is happening and also it's really scary to me this yeah. has always been my identity so kind of painting the picture um for those of you listening now but talking about the stories that you brought up how the hearing yeah. other people's stories Ironically, the story that did it for me was written by a man that identified as gay who was having uh, sexual orientation, intrusive thoughts about being straight. Yep. And I was like, this is unreal. And I don't even remember that guy's name, but I love him so much because he (laughs) was the guy in this blog post that he just randomly decided to throw up on the Internet. And this was back in like 2016 when this was these conversations were nowhere near where they're at now is Mm -hmm. what set me on that path. So I wanted I went off on a side tangent there, but the process you described is how I see it going time and again. Um, Yep. And the stories are so powerful. And so at no CD, um, you kind of described a little bit of the like reaching out process. So can they they let's say somebody okay is like all right I, I think i have ocd how can they get get in touch with you all what is that process yeah, yeah. The, the best thing they can do is just go on our website and book a free call okay the call is absolutely free it'll say the call's 15 minutes but we'll take as much time as you guys need right okay. we're, we're never going to hang up the phone on you okay. um, just because um you might have some extra words <laughs> that you'd like to share with us mm-hmm. um but basically we'll just fill you in right we're, first things first like i said we're going to listen we're going to empathize we're going to understand where you're coming from and and relate to you because that's what's important we're all people here and we're all trying to help each other feel better and get better and stay better yeah and after that, you know, we'll dive into the specifics, right? What does therapy look like? How much does it cost? How long does it last? How is it that I communicate with my therapist? What type of extra support does no CD offer during my time in therapy? Right. Mm. So we can fill in all those blanks there and give you the understanding. And of course there's legal pieces as well, right? We've got to gather your basic information and get your email and, you know, dial you in with the appointment and all that jazz. But otherwise, you know, it's a really simple conversation. Um, and really we're just here to help, right. And just, just book that call and talk with one of our care advisors and they'd be more than willing to, to chat with you and help you set up an appointment. Is there any information on that preliminary free call? Is there any information that people should sh- like come ready with? I'm ready to book an appointment. That's it. If, That's you're, it. if you're on the, if you're on the phone and you, you, there's, you there's need, like, your so many insurance? different, <laughs> yeah, if you know what your insurance is, that's great. If you don't know what your insurance is, we're still going to try to help you out. Perfect. Right? 
Okay. Um, you know, if you've got insurance that's in network, great. If you got insurance that's out of network, we've got some special deals that hopefully we can run by you and hopefully that works out for your financial situation, right? We mm -hmm. want to help as many people as we can. Okay. And uh, we understand that not everybody's in the same financial situation, right? Everyone's lives are different and the experiences and the jobs they have are different. Um, but we do everything in our power to make sure that, hey, if you are in need of therapy for OCD, we're going to get you that therapy mm. as quickly as we can. So that's beautiful. That's awesome. So is there anything that people should know um, about how insurance works in the process? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. There's, a, there's a lot to be said for insurance and insurance is a beast, right? Insurance yeah. is a very, very tricky beast. We live in a, in a country where, you know, private insurance dominates, right? And it's a very um, complex machine that mm -hmm. we deal with. Um, as far as insurance goes, um, if you do have an insurance plan, you know, there are, uh, I guess, let me backtrack for a second. The, the first thing to know is that you have to see a therapist that's licensed in your state, right? That's probably one of the number one questions that we get, okay. right? Is, hey, I live in Virginia, but I see this therapist in Washington. Can I work with them? You know, there are a bunch of legal things that just haven't caught up with the new day and age of seeing uh, medical professionals online, right. right? Where there's not, you know, a, a federal cross license for, for therapists or psych psychologists. Mm. Um, and so you've got to see somebody in your state, right? That's one thing to know. And then as far as insurance goes, you've got to see a therapist who's credentialed with that insurance provider, right? And so mm. in OCD, we do a great job of helping get our therapists enrolled in a number of insurances, right? United Healthcare, Humana, at in Massachusetts, Blue Cross Blue Shield, right? A lot of the big, huge pairs we work with, which we're very grateful to work with, right? The more people right. that we can cover, you know, and get treatment based on their insurance plan, the better, right? It's just more affordable for them in that case. Um, but yeah, and um, shoot, I'm not sure where I was going next, but yeah, insurance is a little bit tricky, but you know, as long as you've uh, got some type of information, we're willing to work with you, so. yeah. Well, and I think it's a big, like, it's important for people to know. And, and it's great that you even said, like, we need to kind of catch up with the laws because now, yeah. I mean, especially after the pandemic, people are used to virtual. We know that yep. it works. We know that it's effective. And while people are always going to gravitate towards that in-person option, what is the person in a community that doesn't have great resources near them yep. do? And I think that that virtual um, aspect provides that. But current state is the state that you're in is yep. where you can see licensed clinicians. Exactly. And, and people make the journey. You know, <laughs> I've had a number of people that I've spoken to who live in Idaho or Montana and just drive drive across the state border to see somebody else. Right. Yep. And if we can, you know, pressure our lawmakers to create more uniformity around um, licensure and practicing, you know, we can help more people in more places, especially in places that just have lower resources. Right. Completely agree with that. I, and I think, I think that that's a really good point. And you've got the wheels up here turning that the advocate yeah. in me is you're firing me <laughs> up right now. Yeah. Um, write that letter, write that letter, call that, call that congressional representative. Absolutely. Absolutely. I'm going to be making a list after this of, of people <laughs> that, that need, need a letter and a phone call, but no, I think that that's important. Um, so in terms of the actual therapy that's conducted, what, what goes down in a, in a therapy session? Yeah, great question. So first things first, uh, as you mentioned, everything is, is online, right? And secondly, the therapist is an OCD specialist, right? So you're already in the right place in those two regards. And then thirdly, the primary focus and type of treatment that's going to be done is that exposure and response prevention therapy, right? Which is the gold standard of treatment, the most proven method to help treat OCD. And what'll happen is the first session is gonna be about an hour long. So that's when you'll meet with your therapist, talk through what it is you're experiencing, you know, whether you're checking doors or locks, whether you're, you know, praying multiple times a day and, and feeling confused in that regard, whatever it is that you have going on. Right. Sharing right. with them what the experience is. There are some forms that you'll fill out before you meet with the therapist, right? Some consent forms and some hierarchy stuff that you'll fill in, mm. sort of like a, a casual intake form. So that way the therapist has an idea of where to start with you. And then from there, the therapist is basically just going to craft a personalized treatment plan right? Mm. Based on what you're experiencing. 
And after that, it'll be a combination of hour and half hour sessions, right? Usually taking place. Most, most people are only in therapy for about 10 to 12 weeks is really what it is. You okay. know, at, at no CD, um, we're, we're not trying to keep you any longer than you need to be, right? right. The, the goal is to effectively give you the tools and the mastery over ERP so that you can do exposures on your own for life, right? And feel comfortable enough managing the OCD that you don't need to see somebody on a regular basis. Yeah. Right. Okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. and, and that was my experience too. It's yeah. from the very get go. It was, I want to teach you skills that you can, that you can utilize whenever you need them so that you're yeah. not dependent on me. Exactly. Exactly. Cause OCD is going to evolve and change forms. Yes, and, it is. You know, those thoughts that you have might go away and new thoughts just sprout up. And it's like whack-a-mole. <laughs> whack-a-mole is exactly the right way to put it. Yeah. And so, yeah. And the therapist will just work with you. And then what will happen is, you know, you'll start from little to small, right? The therapist, you know, your greatest fear is never going to be the first thing that you start out with, right? Mm -hmm. If you've got contamination OCD and you're afraid of go getting COVID, no one's going to ask you to inject COVID into your body, right? That's <laughs> right. Never, never right. going to happen, right? right. Um, you know, that is an 11 out of 10 on the anxiety scale for some Absolutely. people, yes. right? Uh, and so the therapist will work with you on a one out of 10 exposure, two out of 10 exposure, and you'll build up that ERP muscle in your brain. You're literally changing the way that your brain functions, right? Yes. Through ERP. Yes. So that way you can feel more comfortable with those intrusive uh, thoughts um, so that way you can realize that the uncertainty behind those thoughts is just uncertainty, right? Yep. That's all it is. And once you can handle that, you can, you can handle just about anything. And, and it's interesting because I've, so I think just by the nature of having OCD myself, that a lot of my guests have been individuals that live with OCD <laughs> and we've talked so much about the theme of living in the area of gray and how yep. people with OCD are forced to learn that skill, but how important that skill is for everybody. Because life is nothing but a big area of gray. Oh, yeah. um, and I think that people, as we're coming out of the pandemic, have I think there was such an uptick in anxiety um, because mm -hmm. people were being confronted with deep uncertainty and it's anxiety inducing. Um, oh, yeah. So learning to live in that area of gray. And then I had a great guest on who had a wonderful uh, analogy around when you're building this new skill, it's like you're, the neural pathways that you have already formed are like the Grand Canyon, right? Yeah. The, the, from rain washing down on the rocks over thousands of years, these canyons and, and pathways have been formed. And so when you go into ERP, when you go into your first few sessions, it's meant to be very anxiety inducing. First off, that's where you actually get the, the results. Um, yep. But you're also building a new skill. You are quite literally forming a new Grand Canyon inside of your brain with new neural pathways yep. and that water trickling down and, and rerouting that water and, and, and washing away sediment and rock takes some time. Now, yeah. ideally it takes 10 to 12 weeks to get the foundation where you're rerouting the, foundation. The, exactly. the water in the direction you want to go. But then from that point forward, the homework in between is, I mean, it is the, it is the key to that long-term recovery as it pertains <laughs> to OCD. Um, what does the homework process look like in between sessions with an OCD uh, therapist? Yeah, homework is great. And we're actually making some upgrades to homework that are going to be live this next week. So that's a little bit Perfect. of a sneak peek, Love sneak that. peek piece right there. Um, homework is great. So, you know, we have what is called a fears and response list. And you can list the fear, right? Let's use an example. Let's say I'm afraid to hold a knife, right? Yep. Yep. Um, you can punch that in and say, this is a six out of 10 on my anxiety level. Yep. And you know, being in the grocery store, walking through the knife aisle makes me feel pretty uncomfortable, mm. right? Mm. And you'll punch all that in and the therapist will look at the information that you've entered and then create a list of exposures for you. They might be timed. They might be a number of times that you have to repeat the exposure, right? It just yep. depends on the nature of what the therapist is going to do you. And then you'll have a list of homework, right? The therapist will provide you with a list of homework and say, hey, you know, for, 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 for a try, why don't you draw a picture of an ice on a knife of, on a piece of paper and say with that piece of paper. Right. Mm. Right. Mm. And it's like, I love, that. you know, you know, they're, they're going to craft some pretty creative things to help you, you know, build up that ERP muscle when it comes to the anxiety around, you know, that harm OCD that you might be experiencing. And then you'll track that in the app, which is great. And you'll say, 
all right, I drew a knife and the therapist wanted me to sit with the picture of the knife for two minutes. And you know what? I did my best, but I only did it for one minute. Right. Yeah. And you track that in the app and the therapist sees that and says, okay, the picture with the knife was a little, little tough. So we'll keep that on the back burner and we'll craft something else and we'll, we'll, we'll make a new plan of attack. Yes. Yes. Gosh, I, th- it just makes me super excited. The, the, this next phase of civilization that we're moving into, this is, <laughs> I mean, pairing the technology with the awareness, um, with the therapy Mm-hmm. is just i just love it i mean there's such there's so much awareness around mental health being created now we've got the talk therapy to treat it and now you marry that with the technology and you've got a perfect recipe for people to be able to recover no matter where they are um in the country i was going to say the world has it does no cd have plans for international expansion oh, yeah. hey if you're living in spain and listening if you're living in germany you know send us an email that might be easiest for you. Phone lines are a little difficult internationally, but yes. you know, we can, we can get you set up with therapy. There are some places that we can't work with, right. To be completely transparent. Um, okay. For example, in North Korea, um, you know, based on government regulations, right. So there are some countries that we can't offer services in right now. Um, but I was you expecting Ma- you to say like <laughs> Australia, I, there's no. not a whole lot. There's a, there's not a whole lot going on in, in North Korea at the moment. Yeah. Sadly, yeah. there's, there's quite a few restrictions there. <laughs> quite a few restrictions. Exactly. And so our hands are tied, uh, you know, in, in certain cases like that. Um, but if you live in Australia, if you live in, in the UK, you know, if you live in South America, you know, wherever it is that you might be, we're, we're happy to, we're happy to help. We have a, a number of therapists that can, that can help internationally as well. What should somebody look for in their healthcare professional? Like as they're kind of vetting, going through the vetting process, what is like the like, okay, hey, I think, I think things are going well. What is, what, what do you recommend? Yeah. And you're talking specifically about an an OCD therapist, you mean? Mm -hmm. Yeah. I think, I think from my experience, the number one thing that I'm, I'm looking for is empathy, right? Mm -hmm. You want to, you know, and as much as, as uh, ERP is a driving factor in the success of treating OCD. You know, a lot of studies will say the connection that you have with your therapist is also just as important, Mm. right? So, you know, thankful to work at a company where everyone cares, right? And everyone is is deeply uh, in love with helping others, right? Mm. So you're not going to have a problem with that here in OCD. But if you're looking for a provider, that's the first thing I'd look for. You want to make sure you have a good connection. You want to make sure that you can trust the person that's going to be helping you out. Yeah. Super, super important. Um, and then the second piece is that ERP. Are they using ERP? How familiar are they with ERP? What, who are they trained by? Right. We're lucky we've got Dr. McGrath and Dr. Fusner here at OCD, you know, two of the world's leading OCD researchers and they train, they train our team, right. They develop the curriculum and everything. And, you know, proud to say that our, our therapy team is top notch, right. If not, the, I would argue the best in the world, arguably, to be Incredible. completely honest. Yeah. So, you know, it's it's an amazing opportunity, but those those two things are super super important. And luckily, we've got both of those here at mm. NoCD. But if you're out there searching, those are the things I would take into account. I like it: empathy, trust, and then I would say ability. And that's what <laughs> I always talk about in my speeches, uh, because sadly, I think OCD is still so misdiagnosed in oh, society. Yeah. Oh, Gosh, yeah. we miss the mark still so often, and often. I have to snag people as an advocate and get them. Um, get them over to the no CDs of the world to get them the right therapy. Um, because I do think that a lot of people think, uh, when it comes to therapy, it's one size fits all. Right. And it's just not, I mean, it's, it's, right. there's specializations now. I mean, that's just mm-hmm. how it is. Um, so I appreciate you sharing kind of the distinction, like, yes, you want trust there. You want empathy. That's great. Um, but it's not the whole picture. You also have, you need the ability. Can they treat right. exactly what's going on with your brain? Um, yep. hundred percent to the person who is a little weary. Maybe they, maybe they're not very trusting. Maybe there's some doubt. What are the privacy laws around seeking mental health care? Yeah. Great question. So everything here at NCD is HIPAA compliant and yeah. Meaning, meaning to say, right, we have an EHR that therapists use. All the electronic medical records are secure and encrypted and, and all that jazz, right? I'm not, I'm not a, a development expert, um, but I can tell you. Neither am I. Yeah, <laughs> you know, I know it's very hard to get into, right? Perfect. And, uh, you know, of course, things like 
Um, you know, there are companies, you know, all over the world that are being cyber attacked on a regular basis, right? Yes. And we have a team here at NCD dedicated to making sure that leaks don't happen, right? Your information is safe and secure with us. Mm. So super, super important that that happens because you see it all the time, right? Big companies that are held ransom by some Bitcoin guy and oh yeah, wherever they are. And all of a sudden, you know, data is reached and it's tough. It happens at Target, right? It happens at huge, huge companies, right? Yeah, um, it does. You're definitely so, right. Yeah, privacy, privacy is super, super important. And same thing, you know, our services, when you come to us on the phone, you know, everything that you tell us is confidential. There are some, there are some laws, right, um, where we have to mandatorily manda make a mandatory report, right? If there's signs of, you know, abuse or neglect in the home, you know, there are things that the government asks us to report on, right? Just like with any type of call center type of service, okay. right? To make sure that the person on the other, other, other end of the line is safe. Right. There, mm. there are things there to make sure that the person is safe. Right. If you're thinking of harming yourself, you need to hang up the phone and dial 911. Right. Okay. Yeah, that's there, you know, or, you know, call the suicide hotline. Right. Yep. And if you call in an OCD, that's what you'll get right before you even speak with a member. If you call our direct line, hey, if you're having those, if you're having a difficult time right now, you've got to call an emergency professional. Right. So, yep. um, you know, as far as privacy goes, yeah, everything's safe and secure here. And, you know, stays between you and your therapist and you and your care advisor. Um, you know, to give an example, I've, I've talked to one gentleman over the course of a whole year, right, who just kept saving up money, just, you know, had kept using our free tools, kept attending seminars that we had online on our YouTube page, mm. and then finally was able to make the investment, um, you know, and it was great talking to that guy over and over again. Right. But it's, yeah. it's, it's interesting. You kind of develop these little private relationships yes. um, and then you get to see the success afterwards, which is very fun. And I love the word that you used in terms of investment. And that's something that I talk about in my speeches all the time is, and in the book is like, you are making an, in, it's it therapy is personal development. I mean, no matter oh, yeah. how you chalk it up, it's personal development. It's it's spiritual development at times. You know, it is. It's, it's so important. It is. It is spiritual development. And I think that the people that I've seen, even especially with OCD, that really, they make that investment, they go on that journey, um, and they really heal themselves, mm -hmm. they come out the other side a more evolved, empathetic person. Yeah talking yep. about that spirituality and there's just this deeper sense of humanity and connection and under yeah. kind of this understanding of what other people can go through and, and struggle with. Um, but it is, it is 100% an investment. And I'll tell, I'll tell the listeners that for myself personally, I am completely, I don't want to say completely. There's still so many parts of me that I've brought with me throughout my entire life, but I am a different person since yeah. since the diagnosis and going through the therapy and i'd like to think a slightly evolved better human being i mean i i guess we yeah. could we could we could do a poll on that and really find <laughs> out from the from those around me but i don't know i'd like to think that i'm more empathetic now um so i just loved yeah. that you use the word investment because that's what it is yeah and, it, and it's not only an investment in yourself and once you make that investment you can invest in other people right mm. often often people say you know help yourself and then you can help others Yes. Right? And that's part of living in the OCD community is once you understand what it is that's going on, how you can get better and getting better, you can look at other people who are struggling with the same thing and say, hey, it's possible. Right. Yes. And that's huge. And, you know, giving that hope to people is so important because so many people live without that hope. And it's very hard to see. You're absolutely right. And when you're in that hopeless place, it is hard to see. It's hard mm -hmm. to see the what that life could be on the other side. Because oh, yeah. you're looking at life through the context of where you're at right now. Yep. Um, so I really appreciate you saying that. Uh, as we kind of, I, I think you did a great job. Let me ask this. Is there anything that I haven't asked that it's like, okay, hey, this is, I get this question a lot as people are going through this process that they um, should know about? It's a great question. <laughs> Excuse my coughing there. Um, I think a couple things. Number okay. one is reassurance, right? If mm. you're, you know, if you're coming to the phone for reassurance, we're not going to give it to you, right? right? We're as trained professionals, right? We're going to direct you to, hey, I know you, you really need that right now. I know it feels like you need that right now, but that's that's not what's going to be helpful, right? That's, that's not how you get better. Yep. So that's just one thing to know. 
Um, and number two is just the same thing that I hit the, the nail on the head with, which is we're here to help, right? Even if for some reason we're unable to help, right? You know, we, you know, your insurance out of network and you live in a country where we don't have any therapists available and, mm. you know, all the factors are just lined up against you. You're still going to be able to use our app. You're still going to be able to attend support sessions, you know, and we've got that logged and we're going to be working on that on the back end, right? It might take some time, but we're here to help. And our mission to end the global suffering of OCD, we mean that, right? We're not here joshing. Mm. We're not here messing around. We're here on a mission to save the, save the world from people who are suffering silently with this condition mm. and we're not going to stop until we do it. That's that, that might be where we, where we need to, uh, to end this podcast. I think that that is a powerful mission. Um, something that I'm certainly aligned with and want to do everything I can to help you all out in that mission. I guess the only other question I would have is like, do you have one piece of advice for that listener right now to get them started on their mental health journey to recovery? Yeah. You just got to take the first step. Take you the just got to schedule a call. Take the first step. Nice. It's a hard schedule step to take. Schedule a call. Take that first step and pick up the phone. You know, one thing that we, we people will schedule calls and not come to the phone, man. You got to come to the phone. You know, mm. that's the thing. You got to pick up. Pick up the phone, y'all, and just make that first step. It's an investment. Like Garrett was saying, it's an investment. And make that first call, schedule that first appointment, and just show up for that one. Just have that little bit yep. of hope that maybe something good could come out of the out of this phone call. That's all um, it takes. And get get you on your path to recovery. Well, I'll tell you, Garrett, it's I really appreciate you coming on, talking nuts and bolts. Yep. with me today this is a super important episode super important episode um and i'm grateful for you i'm grateful for no cd um so yeah thank you and definitely thank gonna you, have Zach. to connect yeah yeah of course let's go get a, a classic tea and coffee somewhere in the southern california area there you go somewhere in the socal region which oh, yeah. uh we're only probably about 20 miles away from each other but it'll take us a couple <laughs> it'll take us a couple hours to meet up oh yeah 100 so. 100 percent <laughs> Well, cool, man. I appreciate you coming on to the show. Um, you're not alone, everybody tuning in and uh, look forward to connecting with you in the future, man. Of course. Thanks, Zach. And thanks, everybody, for listening. If you're seeking help, we're here to help. So awesome. just make that phone call. Amazing. Make that phone call, y'all. Okay. All right. Thanks, Zach.